So let's talk now about the STM32H5 scalable security. In this part, I would like to introduce you all those new mechanisms that have been introduced on the H5. We have a new temporal isolation level. We have a real secure storage coupled with this temporal isolation. We've got those product state that we already discussed in previous parts, debug authentication, and this embedded secure boot with secure firmware update capability called STI ROT, which is a ROM secure boot. And we also have ready to use code example of two stage bootloader in open source. So you can use and combine all those mechanisms to build your own security. In this part, I would like to quickly give you an overview about this temporal isolation, then some information about the secure storage, the product life cycle, the different secure boot paths that are supported by our tools, and the STI rot with some detail about this one. Let's start with the temporal isolation. What is a temporal isolation? It's a protection that evolved during the code execution. So HTTP H5 a temporal isolation and the name is HTTP. The principle is two portions of user flash that could be hidden until the next reset. So when you are booted at reset time, you are on HTTP level one. You can define some option by a portion of the user flash. When the code will execute it in this portion, then you can call an API in the RSS services. This one will increase the HTTP level. And this portion of flash disappear until the next reset. That means it can't be accessed anymore in any manner. Then, thanks to the flash register, we can define a second portion of the user flash. And again, the code will be executed in this portion. We can call the RSS services. It will increment the HTTP level to HTTP level 3. And the second portion of flash disappear. Two portion of flash disappears. Doesn't make you reminding something? Two stage bootloader. So in fact, this mechanism with two portion of flash as that disappears has been designed to address two stage bootloader architectures. You could imagine you have the first stage bootloader defined in this first portion of flash, a second stage bootloader, and after each execution, we will increment the HTTP level and make disappear the code. Let's talk now about the secure storage, also named OBK, for OBK storage. Okay, secure storage, OBK storage, that means you can store also some data, not only keys. So to give you a definition of the secure storage, a specific area in a system, data can be provisioned securely, data are isolated and can be accessed only by authorized part of the system. Data can't be extracted from one system to be reused on another system. On the STM32, we have a real secure storage named OBK storage. It's the first product that got this functionality. The data stored are protected thanks temporal isolation. I just described this protection before. Trace zone MPU isolation. Optionally, those OB keys are encrypted thanks to the hardware unique and a monotonic counter. So option by is a specific storage in the system flash. So it's not part of the user flash. Total storage of this one is 8 kilobytes and it has been split in five predefined areas corresponding to HDP level 0, HDP level 1, HDP level 2, HDP level 3, secure and non-secure. So the, there is a combination between the temporal isolation and this secure storage. So on HDP level 0, everything is accessible. HDP level 1, OBK level 1 disappears. Level 2, level 3. And regarding the secure and non secure, those both can only be accessed in secure mode. But we can have some dedicated part for the non secure. If you do a regression, that means if you remove all the non secure part, only the non secure part OBK will be removed also. What is not detailed in this part is how those keys could be encrypted. The encryption of the different OB key is different depending on the level. That means not the same key that you use uh, for each one. 
The key used for encryption of those ones are using the hardware unique key. That means it's unique per device. But also there is a combination with a monotonic counter. Each time you do a regression or a partial regression, then it will change the key encryption. So really quite secure configuration. So if I combine the both, temporal isolation and secure storage, you can put the first stage bootloader in this first portion of flash protected, second stage bootloader. So you are booting in HDP level one. The first stage bootloader will check the integrity and the authenticity of the second stage bootloader thanks the OB key level one. Then you will call the RSS services, increment the HDP level. Then the second stage bootloader will check the integrity and the authenticity of the application, thanks the OB key, which are stored in OB key level 2. Again, it will increase the HDP level, and then it will launch our application, which will be executed in HDP level 3. Provisioning of the OB key should be done in a dedicated product state, which name is provisioning. A dedicated provisioning mechanism is implemented, and program just need to send a binary file containing the key with a predefined format. We've got a tool to create uh, those files, which is named Packet Trusted Creators. So you need to give as input what you want to store as key. Again, I wrote key here, but it can be also some data that could be used by your application. It's up to you to decide what, uh, what you want to put there. It's a secure storage. Then you need an uh, obkey config file.xml which describes the destination address, so at which level it will be provisioning, and if the encryption is done or not, because it could be activated or deactivated, it's just a matter of level of security you want to achieve. And then you will use QProgrammer with your target in a provisioning state. Lifecycle. This was already in introduced a little bit in the workshop previously. Main addition regarding the path of provisioning state that is dedicated to provision the secure storage. The closed state and the lock state, only difference is the inability to connect to debug authentication in lock state. And we have the debug opening substate which allows to reopen the debugging link. The regression principle is exactly the same that on other STM32. The different possible states, open, that means fully open. You can do whatever you want. You can connect with the debugger and access all the resources. In provisioning state, the only thing you can do is to provision the OB key storage. You can't execute code from the user flash on the kind of things. It's really dedicated to this. Trace zone close is when the non-secure is still open and all the secure part is closed. It has been used for the secure manager, but it could be also used by you if you want to split in your team from a secure team to a non-secure team. But those are not final states. A real final state is closed or locked. I call final state, I mean a state of your product on the field. In the case of close, it's a final state, but we have the capability to reopen the debugging or to do a regression. This has been detailed in the previous part. Lock state, it's a final state without any reconnection possibility. It's up to you to decide which one you want to use. I gave you here some equivalent with RDP level and the different transition possible. Remember, it's always good in provision to provision the debug authentication access. If you don't have the DA key, no possibility to reopen or to do a regression after. This is the main difference regarding RGP level that we've got previously. Regarding the regression, you can do it from provisioning, IROD provision, trace and close. You've got the capability to do a partial regression or a full regression. Okay, from lock state, you can't do anything. What happened or what are the details about those non secure regression or regression? On the partial regression, what's happened? the non-secure flash code is erased. The OB key HDP level 3 non-secure are erased. And there is this epoch counter that is incrementing. This one which is used to generate a specific key to encrypt the secure storage. That means after each 
non-secure regression, encryption of non-secure OBK storage will be different. Okay. Now regarding a full regression, in such case, everything is erased. The complete content of the OB keys, the user flash, secure and unsecure, and we have a second epoch counter that is incremented. Now let's talk to you about the secure boot path. Just naming convention, but I think now you are quite familiar with this. The two first letters indicate the owner of the component. It could be ISD or AOM. Y is either E for immutable, it was the first stage bootloader, U for updatable, the second stage bootloader, and root trust often stands for secure boot. So the different possibilities you can have, STIROT, the ROM bootloader, which is available on H573, the STUROT, that is the second stage bootloader from ST, which is only delivered in the context of the secure manager but it was included in this use image and you don't see these details. But after you can have your own implementation of the first stage and second stage bootloader. It will be OM IROT, OM UROT. And we provided example code for this based on MCU boot. Regarding the H5 boot path, configuration is mainly done thanks option byte. Trust zone enable or not, boot UBU for unique boot entry, and also some option byte non-secure boot address on secure boot address. Now I will detail depending on the different family or product in the H5 family, the possible boot path. For the H5 OX, there is no trust zone. So just a unique boot entry uh, to NS boot uh, address option byte. We have some code example of one stage bootloader so who am I wrote? Frankly speaking, a second stage bootloader regarding the size of the flash is just hypothetical because the size of the flash is too small here. So we've got an example of based on MCU boot, which name is OMI wrote that launch just an application on this product. Now, if we are talking about the family H5 CSX, here we've got trust zone, but we have no crypto accelerator and no STI rot. Why no STI rot? Remember, STI rot is certified CZIP and PSA level 3, resistant to some physical attack, which rely on some crypto accelerators, which are DPA or side channel attack resistant, which are not present here. So we don't have any STI rot here. But you have the possibility to activate or not to a zone and to have your own implementation of first stage and second stage bootloader. Again, we deliver code example for this. Only one stage bootloader example is available. And finally, with the H573, here you've got all the possibility because you've got trust zone, you've got the crypto accelerators, and you've got STI rot. So depending on the unique boot entry, you can either use your own implementation of first stage or two stage bootloader, but you can also rely on STI rot and you can use just STI rot to launch your application or to launch a second stage bootloader. What is supported by Kubemix? All those configurations. The first one is one stage bootloader where you are, I would say, responsible for the secure boot and secure firmware update capabilities. Or you can use STI rot to launch a second stage bootloader. Or you can have STI rot plus secure manager. That means STU rod plus STU rod plus Secure Manager. Here I want to sum up all the security features available depending on which product. On the H5OX, you still have HDPL protection. Regarding the debug authentication, you only have password. That means you can only control the regression thanks to password but you don't have the capability to reopen the debugging link to do real debug your application. This is not available on this platform. You don't have neither uh, any secure storage. On the H5 CISX, you've got the HDP level protection, so this temporal isolation. You've got the OBK storage and the provisioning mechanism. And regarding the debug authentication, if you activate Trust Zone, you have the certificate, that means the capability to reopen and to debug 
your application even in a closed state. While if you don't use Trust Zone, you are only the capability of password control, and this means only regression. That means if you want to have the capability to reopen, to debug something, you need to activate Trust Zone. And finally, on the H5734 moments, you've got everything I will say. You've got also the STI rot, and you've got the Secure Manager. On those two last bricks are PSA CZIP level 3, and are required to have Trust Zone activated. This is an important point to keep in mind. If you want to use STI rot just to load your application, at least you need to activate Trust Zone. Now, let's give you some details about STI rot. STI root, ST immutable root of trust. A secure boot code with secure firmware update capabilities. And the code is basically uh, based on MCU boot, and we add it inside some counter measurements against a board level attack. It has been, or it will be certified, CZIP PSA level 3, so which is a guarantee of a robustness against a board level attack. To activate it, it sends an option byte, boot UBU, but it requires to have Trust Zone enabled. And you need to provision two specific things in the OBK HDP level 1. One uh, file or data concerning the configuration of this one and the key that will be used to do the authentication and the decryption of a new firmware. You also need to provide to provision some zero initialized data that will be used by uh, STI Rot to check or to store the current version installed on the product. So again, here it was a CC key that is used for authentication of, uh, of the application. Uh, your application could be full secure or could be secure plus non-secure. But it was only one image for the both. That means you have one signatures for the application secure and non-secure which are concatenated together. Regarding the firmware update, it was a dual slot setup. That means you have an active slot and a downlink slot. So application can use almost half of the size of the flash, but no more, because you need to have the same size of download and execution slot. Regarding the firmware loader, how you will get a new version. Either you can implement it in your application, but you also have the possibility to jump to the embedded bootloader the system one, not the secure one, which uh, allow you to download a new version. And this is what I will do in the next answer. So as I previously said, one image for secure and non-secure application only. So in the cube H5, you will get script and code example for this one. And it's also supported by CubeMX. So I propose in the next part to do an hands-on and show you how we can create an application that will be launched by the Secure Manager and that could be updated by the Secure Manager. Thank you.